that is the number one reason not to date a doctor. Is that fair? Uh, well, it didn't stop you, did it? Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Evie Clay, I'm a junior doctor. Um, and this is my husband, Brett. Not a doctor. Who is not a doctor. And in today's video, I thought I would have him in it because, um, you know, he knows what it's like firsthand to be dating a medic for a really long time. We've been together now for 10 years. He's seen me through my A-levels and then getting into med school, surviving through med school, uh, and then working as a doctor as well. So I think he's the perfect person to be answering these questions, or well, or who has a, the best idea of what it's like to be with a medic. It's not everything you would expect. That's what, one thing I would say. What does that mean? Well, let's get into it, but I would just say that dating a medic, not what you'd expect. <laughs> I hope in a good way though. Hmm. Let's just jump in then into the list of things that nobody tells you about what it's like dating a doctor. So I've got a list here on my phone which I have prepared. They are just kind of bullet points so then I'm just depending on Brett to expand on them. So the first thing I've written down is probably that a lot of their friends will probably be doctors too. So get ready for a lot of medical conversations. What do you think about that? Get ready for a lot of medical conversations. I would say there's going to be a lot of medical conversations happening around you. You're probably not going to be involved in them because we you're not going to understand you. what... No, no you don't. So we've been to many dinners. Um, I, I go to less now than I did before. When I know she's going for dinner with her medic friends and there's only going to be medics there, I don't go because it's not that they don't include you, but they talk in a way that, you, you know, it's like another language and you just don't have a clue what's going on. But I thought you're clued in now. You've had like no, years no, of practice no. of like medical jargon. Evie's got this one friend called Avril, and when she's there, to be fair, she breaks it down into a way that I can understand. But she's the only one out of all her other medic friends. When they start talking about medicine, I'm it's just I, you cannot understand what they're talking about. But I thought you find it interesting. No. 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 Oh man. There are some times when if I know that. Any of her medic friends who are coming, I'll bring in either their girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife that isn't a medic, then I'll go because then I've actually got someone to talk to something about. Except most of the time, her friends who are medics, boyfriends and husbands, or girlfriends and wives, are medics as well. So yeah, it's just like tight-knit little world where they talk about medicine all the time. You know, sleep, eat, drink, work, medicine, everything medicine. And yeah, it can be a bit difficult sometimes when you're getting out with their friends. You make us sound like we're really boring people, but we're not, I promise. It's obviously not that bad because we're still together. <laughs> when I pull her away from her work or her medic friends, then like she's a completely different person. Um, we can talk about normal things and yeah, but I do think that when you're in that environment, it's like, it's not a toxic one in any way. Obviously it's a really good one, but you always just specify and like you just talk about medicine basically, which is totally understandable, but you know, for someone who's not from that world, it can be difficult to keep an interest in being involved in that conversation. Yeah, that's fair enough. And I guess like in the last year or two years now, like since like we've taken you have to go traveling and then being on maternity leave, that's been happening less, right? Yeah, it's not a bad thing, you don't mind. Yeah. I just don't show up anymore to these dinners. So. <gasps> okay, moving on, before we start arguing about that. The second point I've got here is, be prepared for them to have lifelong exams. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's, that's the case with any other, a lot of other professions as well, though, really isn't like it? Really like what? Accountancy. That's the only other thing, I think. Yeah. So, like, I mean, there are ongoing exams and stuff, aren't there? Yeah, they're constant. Yeah. Like, you think that you don't have exams just because you've gotten out of med school and you're like, yes, main hurdles have passed. But actually, you know, you've got your postgraduate exams to sit through. Um, yeah, and you've seen me sit through, okay, well, one more since medical, oh, two, actually. Since yeah. medical school, because I did the MRCP unnecessarily, and then the FRC odd. Um, yeah, and I mean, it depends, though, doesn't it? How much you want to study for it? Like, okay, you've got an exam, but if you're gonna like go and shut yourself away for a couple of months to study for it, it's gonna impact things more than if you didn't. So, yeah, well, but if you don't do that, then it's hard to pass, you know. Mm. See, you see what kind of study girl she is. <laughs> um, but obviously, those things have been pre-baby as well. Those exams, so. Um, a lot easier. I just don't know what it's going to be like now with the baby K and having to do exams yeah. on top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to be able to go and hibernate to study, are you? No. Well, we'll have to figure that out. Third thing. When you have the man flu, don't expect to have any sympathy. What do well, you think? 
Yeah. Well, is that is that what is that something that people say? Where do you get this list from? Or is this something? Oh, in my head. On? It's just what I, I think. I think you can it. be you can be uh, you can give me some sympathy. Oh, really? Saying, yeah, but I have to go oh. really over the top. Like you see, I now I know. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I can be a little bit sick, and yeah, she just won't care. But like, if you like really like you know go for it, really try and like make it sound like you're worse than you are. Then the sympathy still does come like, out. Oh, my head hurts, and oh my god, my throat it burns. <laughs> Maybe not quite like that, but yeah, um, yeah. But I, I know a lot of people who are not doctors, and they also give no sympathy to people when they're sick. So I think that's probably more a personality thing. But I don't all think right. you're like that at all, to be honest. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Okay, well that's that's quite positive. Um, the fourth thing is, but you'll really know when you do need to go to hospital. And I think that what I was thinking about here was when you had your kidney stones. Yeah, you've sent me to hospital a few times and I basically have been told that I hadn't needed to be there. No! Okay, kidney stones. That was legit. Yeah, he had like a, a centimeter eight large... Mil. Eight mil. Oh, eight mil. Yeah, an eight Kidney mil. stone, which he wouldn't pass on his own, so he needed to go into hospital. His... Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, they, they so put pain. a stent. Stent. A stent. Yeah, had that removed. And you um, were in for days. But I feel like there was something else that you sent me in for and I didn't need to be in for it. No? I don't think so. Oh, there was that problem with your foot once. Oh yeah. And I was working in A&E and my consultant really, really kindly saw him. And he was basically like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. But go that, home. to be fair, that was me sort of pushing to go because I thought there was something wrong. It really yeah, did. You didn't want me to go. Yeah, and it'd been going on for like over a week. Like yeah. quite a while, and he's yeah. like, it's getting worse, it's yeah. not getting better. And then after I saw your doctor, the, the, your consultant, it was just like, He just it's didn't believe me. I was like, there's definitely nothing wrong with your foot. But he was like, there is something wrong with it. Oh. Yeah, and you know, being married to or dating a doctor does give you that sort of reassurance that like, if something is wrong, you can, you can ask for the advice. Um, sometimes because it's the person you're dating or because it's your wife, you still want to go and see like a GP who might not even be specializing in this area that they are, but sometimes there's just something about going to see a GP or something that makes you trust them more. Not that I don't trust you. Okay, I see where this is going. But yeah, definitely a plus I of being um, together with a, with a doctor. The fifth thing is that you'll probably go on holidays without them. Yep. That goes back to the exam thing though as well, doesn't it? Because yeah. whenever I've been on holiday without her, it's because she's been doing an exam. So like, been skiing with my mates where it was like a group trip and she was invited sort of thing but she couldn't come because of that and um, so I think that's sad. happened twice actually skiing twice and then just like a sunny trip once as well because of like other commitments and um, whether it was an exam or not I'm not sure both times but like one of the times like you're just not flexible in terms of when you can get holiday as well right yeah so like for me uh, in the company that I work as long as I give decent notice I can basically take holiday whenever I want as long as I get someone to like watch out for my you know, part of the project, mm. then that's fine. But for doctors, you have s 10 days, uh, so 10, we have 10 days a quarter. To ch or something. Um, well, we have like 27 days, I think it is for the entire year, but it's split up into rotations. So if you've got three rotations, you can only take like a third of your leave um, within that rotation within yeah. three months. So if you wanted to take two or three weeks off and use it all at once, you can't. Yeah, unless you are really lucky and you manage to line it up with like the end of one placement and the start of another right. and you happen to be able to take the leave off like in that giant chunk, mm. which is really rare. Um, and often like your rotor coordinators don't even get back to you until like really late on and then you realize that you've actually been put on call or your weekend or, or a night and you can't even yeah. you can't even take annual leave on those days and you have to really beg someone to, to swap with you. So like the work-life balance, I would say, dating a doctor, you really notice the difference. Sometimes it's not their fault, it's just the nature of the work. So like what I would say about that is if you can, and I had to really persuade her to do this, but if you can persuade her to like take a year off or just <laughs> just skip a year, whatever you can do, just get her away from medicine for a year or so, because we've done that and it's been amazing. Um, I definitely recommend doing that. So you can travel and you can experience things. So normally if you're working as a doctor, you might not be able to because that just sucks otherwise, not gonna lie. Yeah, but I guess, the good thing was that like we planned our holidays around my annual leave because obviously yours was a bit more flexible. Yeah, yeah, that's um, good. So we still did manage to go on holidays together, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I can't imagine how much harder it would have been for like a couple who are both doctors or both, you know, mm -hmm. healthcare professionals. Oh, they wouldn't care though, would they? They just want to work. <laughs> to go to work. We that's don't need to go on holiday. All we love to do is go to work. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, okay, next point is that Number six, you'll probably plan all the holidays. 
Again, I'm not sure whether that's like a personality thing, but I've always planned the holidays. I did that before you went to med school. You know, I think I was always going to be the one to do that. So he's like very much in control. Whoa, whoa. <gasps> Calm down. I mean that in a good way. Like he has got his Excel sheets where like he'll plan out like what, what we're going to be doing and our budget for the trip. So I work as a project manager. And All yeah, about Excel sheets. I'm a good planner. He's been on an Excel course and... <laughs> yeah. Um, planning trips, just something I like to do. Uh, Evie planned one trip once, <laughs> never again. We went to Milan. I had no idea what we were doing, by the way, because I said to her, like, we went right, to this Lake one, Como. This one time you planned, to, well, we were meant to go to Lake Como. We flew into Milan. She'd booked a hotel somewhere near Lake Como. Well, I don't even know if you'd even booked it. But I anyway, booked it. I booked it was it. like, it was like on the other end of Six Lake Como. hours away from the airport or something like that. We arrived in late afternoon. There was just no chance we were going to make it. It's so like, <laughs> within the first couple of hours of Evie's planned trip, you know, we had to book, re another, hotel. book another hotel, pay for two different hotels, waste our money on that one, and then, like, from there on, I was just like, well, what are we doing tomorrow? And she had no plans. I must say, it wasn't my finest moment. And I've improved since then. Because it's never happened again. Mm. I guess because mm. you've planned every trip since then. Mm. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. If you don't want to plan a trip, just don't do it very well. And then someone else will take over. All right, next. Okay, number eight. They'll often stay late at work. What mm. do you think? Yeah, I think probably, you'll probably find that if you are dating a doctor. Yeah. Like if you make dinner plans like, can we meet you at, I don't know, six o'clock? And mm. sometimes I'm meant to finish work at five. But so many times I've had to stay late, especially when you're on a busy job like gastro. Yeah, it did happen to you more than it happened to me. But I think that's something that can happen in any job. To be did it ever happen to you though? Rarely. Yeah. But only because like my... It's know, just the nature of the work. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Like Versus other jobs, you may need to stay late, but like you kind of have a choice. And if you don't want to do it, it's just like, oh, screw it. Yeah. But then, you guys don't have a choice. No, because when you've got an unwell patient and there's, you know, no one to like immediately take over from you, like the on-call team is still busy, you can't just leave your patients. So yeah, so yeah. definitely, if you're dating a doctor or married to a doctor, you'll already know. But if you're dating a doctor, definitely expect them to be working uh, later than their um, like contracted hours. Yeah, and it's not their fault. <laughs> yeah. It's not my fault. Yeah, I well, know that. Never blamed you for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, number eight, you might not have a say on where you ultimately live. Thoughts? Hmm. Yes and no. I think if you're willing to, I think if you're willing to like plan ahead enough, then you can sort of have a say. Mm. But if, if it's just like next, your next rotation or whatever, and you're already like within that larger, the what would you call it? No training program or whatever. Oh, right, yeah. Then you don't have a say because you get told for the next two years where you're going to be? Well, depends. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So if you can plan enough in advance and you know that you're going to apply for a certain specialty or something mm -hmm. and you want to live in a certain area of the country, then you can like make sure that, well, ask or discuss and the doctor can apply to uh, work in that area. So like, for example, we moved to the West Midlands because we knew we wanted to live there and it was a joint decision. So then Evie applied for ophthalmology in the West Midlands. But yeah, within the West Midlands, it's out of our control, Evie can get yeah. sent anywhere. So we tried to buy a house within the middle of all the hospitals, but there's still one or two that are like... Two uh, hours away? Yeah, over That's an hour, crazy. like one way commuting. So yeah. like... Which honestly, it's, it's not that bad if you're, you know, not got too many commitments, but when you're married, you've got a kid, I don't know, yeah. like, it's hard, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, so that that's definitely a sucky thing. Yeah. That, um, so just be prepared that you may have like time apart if, you've got other commitments and you can't go with her to wherever she's staying because you might have to stay in hospital accommodation mm. or if you're going for a long time and you both go you might have to rent but then you've got the additional cost of rent in another place yeah. yeah it's very tough it is tough i would say that is the number one reason not to date a doctor is that fair <laughs> uh well then stop you did it but to be fair you didn't know <laughs> yeah like the tie is just crazy yeah. it's too much that's also the number one reason not to be a doctor. So if you're watching this video thinking about being a doctor or you're in med school, just, you know, go do something else. Maybe banking. If you want to have a life. <laughs> seriously, mean, seriously. I don't know, the grass is always greener, isn't it? The grass is always greener. Yeah, you but know. people don't realise how bad it is. We didn't realise how bad it was going to be, and it is really bad, so, yeah. Sorry. It's not that bad, but it's a bit bad. It's really bad. Okay. Okay, moving on. Um, number nine. You get the perfect companion on a holiday when they do actually make it on holiday. 
And an example of this... What makes a doctor the perfect travel companion then? I'm interested. Well, you know, do, do you not remember the time when you got food poisoning, like really bad food poisoning in Turkey? He had a really bad kebab. He had food poisoning the next day. He had fevers. He was in the bathroom like all day. Um, and he didn't even need to see a doctor because I went to get him some antibiotics, gave it to him, which you can't get without a, pres without a prescription, even in Turkey and stuff. Gave it to him and he was better by the next day. Yeah, that's true. On a trip that might have otherwise been ruined. Yep. That was me. Also happened to us recently in Same Spain, day. where our daughter yeah. got sick. And in Spain, if you're a doctor, you're able to prescribe, there you go, get more words out, prescribe um, antibiotics as well. So we were able to get some perks. So definitely perks to traveling with a doctor. Yeah, I don't know whether doctors are necessarily perfect travel companions. Say. Excuse about that. me. I think I'm a pretty good travel companion. <laughs> no? Yeah. They normally come with like a pack of medicines anyway, plus, um, yeah, extra prescriptions What else you got here? Oh, here we go. Last one, number 10. Number 10. There's always... Where? Yeah, go on. There's always an interesting story to be told at the dinner table. Obviously kept anonymous, she's written there as well. <laughs> Very important. Yes, you know, patient confidentiality. Um, <laughs> I've told you many interesting stories. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Quite often though, the most interesting stories come up when she's with her other doctor friends. <laughs> That's true. And I'll be like, <laughs> and I'll ask her like, how come you didn't tell me that? Like, like sort of thing, because this happened last week, stories. right? Yeah. And it's like the actual gory stuff sometimes doesn't come up until she's like with someone who's also in that world. And I'm like, that is actually interesting. I wish you'd share that with me, but it tends to come up later. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, obviously, um, keep it between ourselves. I guess maybe I am actively trying to like reduce the number of like medical conversations that we have. Mm, fair point. Yeah. Maybe that's why. So you maybe should just you know, be appreciative of my efforts. Yeah. But I don't mind you having to reduce those ones, like, they're actually interesting. Yeah, something funny, you know, like when someone swallows, like, a 2p coin. Yeah, that sort of thing, yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? I think so. Mm. I'll, I'll keep the stories going then. Yeah, keep them going. Okay. I think that's it. What do you think? Well, you ain't got anything else on your list, Yeah, so. I know, but, you know, I'm asking you if you've got anything else to add. What, about dating a doctor? Yeah, only good things. Off the top of my head, I'll be honest, can't think of anything that we haven't covered, but there are pros and cons, just like dating anyone, but I think it's just about finding the right person, isn't it? I mean, whether you're a doctor or not, I'd have been dating you, and I think I would have married you anyway. Aww, yeah. guys. That's, that's it, guys. Yeah, you want to do your outro it. now, Evie? Yes, um, and that's pretty much it, you guys. Those are the 10 things. <laughs> See you next time. That nobody tells you about dating a doctor, um, but now you know. I hope that was interesting and insightful coming from a non-medic. Um, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. <laughs>